Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the comedy and screwball comedy movie titled, Brewster's Millions. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A man called Monty Brewster loves baseball, and plays as a relief pitcher in a minor league. It's so minor in fact, that sometimes the game has to be paused so that trains can come through the outfield. Monty remarks to his friend called Spike that a man in the audience has been taking pictures of him for the last three games, thinking they want him in the big league. Spike however tells him to forget it. That night Monty and Spike are celebrating their victory at a bar, hitting on two women. Suddenly the girl's boyfriends appear, and a big fight begins. The next morning, Monty and Spike are taken to a courtroom where they are proved guilty as charged for multiple things, and the judge sets their bail at $8,000. Since they don't have that money, they are about to be sent back to jail, when suddenly the man with the camera stands up, saying he represents an anonymous party that will pay their bail. Monty exclaims happily they're going to the big time. Next, they're arriving in New York, where they head into a corporate building, and Monty is led into a law office where he meets some men. They ask him if he knew his uncle Rupert Horn, and Monty confused says he doesn't. The man called Ed tells him that his uncle Rupert quarreled with his family in the 30s, went out west, and no one ever heard from him again. Last month, Rupert died, at which point he was one of the richest men in America, and now Monty is the sole living heir. Next, Monty's shown a message from his uncle, who says he's disappointed he's a failed baseball player, but says they're gonna have fun. He tells Monty he's gonna teach him to hate spending money, saying his proposition is for him to spend $100 million in 30 days, and if he can do it, he'll get $1 billion. But there's a catch, after 30 days, he can't own anything, no houses, jewelry, cars or anything, only his clothes. He can give 5% to charity, but can't give away anything more. Also, he can't tell anybody why he's spending the money, which is instant disqualification. His uncle says he thinks Monty can't do it, and gives him the opportunity to take $10 million right away, but that it's his choice if he wants to go for the $1 billion. The two men called Granville and Baxter tell Monty to take the $10 million, since it's extremely hard to not accumulate assets. Monty asks what happens if he tries to spend the $100 million, but fail. Ed, who's a neutral third party, answers that Granville and Baxter will receive the $1 billion and administer it in some charitable fashion for considerable fees. Monty thinks for a second, and then says he'll go for the $1 billion. Ed says that if he owns any assets 30 days from now at exactly 12 o'clock at midnight, he won't get a penny of the inheritance. An accountant called Angela is assigned to account for all his receipts during the 30 days so they'll know whether he made it or not. They all go to the bank to check his $100 million, and Monty is absolutely overwhelmed. He asks the cameraman if he wants employment, saying he'll get $30,000 a week, and Spike gets upset he'll pay the jerk that much. The bank says they'll offer a 24% interest rate on his money, but Monty demands not to get any interest at all, and Angela gets upset, saying he'll be giving up $20 million a year in interest, but Monty just ignores it. Monty asks a guard what he earns a year, and the guard says he earns about $900 a week. Monty tells him he'll get $11,000 a week if he brings $3 million of his cash, and employs 20 other guards for $10,000 a week to follow him. Spike gets absolutely upset he's paying so much, but Monty asks him to trust him. Next, Monty calls his baseball coach Charlie, telling him that he inherited $100 million, and will arrange for their team to play against the New York Yankees, but Charlie doesn't believe him and hangs up on him. Monty gets disheartened, but then calls on a taxi, asking the driver if he wants to be his personal driver for $14,000 a week, and the driver exclaims America, what a country. Monty turns around, asking who wants to eat lunch, and people cheer. Next, Monty asks for the most expensive wine, which costs $400 a bottle, and yells, asking who wants to eat. Monty asks Angela if he can hire someone to do her work so they can have fun, but she says she's not interested in fun and has a fiancé. Monty remarks he'd love to meet him, but Angela replies he can't buy everyone's time in this world, saying she doubts he can ever buy Warren. Next, Monty is arriving at a hotel, but the owner says the top two floors are already reserved. Monty asks how much they are paying, and receives the answer $275,000. Monty says he'll pay $2.75 million a month, and the owner immediately replies he and his friends are welcome. A day or two later, Monty and Angela are talking as suddenly Warren appears. Monty greets him and offers him champagne, but he says he doesn't drink. Angela says they'll be late for the benefit, and Monty asks what it's about, and Warren explains it. Monty says he'd like to make a small donation, handing over $300,000. Warren gets shocked, and Monty asks if he'd like champagne again, and he accepts. 
Angela tells Warren he doesn't drink, but he ignores her. He remarks he likes the decoration in the room, but that he'd make some things differently, saying his ex-wife was a decorator and some things rubbed off on him. Monty asks him to redecorate his office for $700,000, and Warren immediately says yes. Angela tells him he's a lawyer, not a decorator, and he replies there's nothing wrong with being a decorator. Angela says let's go. Next, Granville and Baxter get angry that Warren is taking a leave of absence to work for Monty. They accept, but ask him to act as their eyes and ears to monitor how Monty is handling his fortune. Two days later, Warren has called his ex-wife Marilyn to help him redecorate his office, which Monty thinks is terrific, telling Marilyn money is no problem, that they can create anything they want. Monty has started a company, and in his office later, a man asks him to invest in taking an iceberg from the North Pole to Africa to get people fresh water. Monty says it's a good idea, asking him if $3 million is enough to get it there, which the man thinks is enough. Suddenly his baseball coach Charlie calls, and Monty tells him he will spare no expense to fix their home stadium for the game with the Yankees, saying he's sending helicopters. Next up, Monty is awaiting his fellow baseball players from home, arriving in helicopters, all while Granville and Baxter are remarking they probably underestimated him. Monty tells the team he can't wait to show the penthouses he rented for them. The next day, the team is practicing for the game against the Yankees, and later in the afternoon, Monty and Spike are taking some time off to have fun. But suddenly, Spike says he should make some sustainable investments, like in precious metals or stamps, and Monty gets an idea. Not long after, Monty walks into a stamp collector shop, asking for their most expensive stamps. Spike remarks this must be the smartest thing Monty has done yet. Next morning, Granville and Baxter are laughing, saying he's bought an asset, seeing the news he bought a stamp for $1.25 million. But then as they start reading mail, they see a letter from Monty with the stamp on, getting angry as it's no longer an asset. Next, they reveal to Warren about the deal Monty has with his dead uncle, and tells him to create a small error in his wife's accounting so that the $1 billion goes to them. Monty sees on TV that the stock in his company has tripled in value due to his investment in the iceberg, and he gets stressed, telling his staff to sell everything, which they say is a bad idea. Monty however insists on selling and giving all money they made to charity. That evening, Monty meets Ed, telling him he's tired of acting like a rich asshole, saying he'll probably not even manage to spend the $100 million. Ed says he doesn't know, but thinks that baseball game is a step in the right direction. Next day in his office, Spike comes in, telling Monty he hopes he'll not be angry, but that he made some investments for him, invested in some oil wells, and made him $10 million. Monty gets distraught, remarking he's right back at where he started, and the others think something is wrong with him. Warren interrupts, saying he needs $20,000 for a deposit on an expensive furniture they're renting, which Monty gives him. Monty says he wants to be alone for a while, and they all get out. He puts on the TV, and hears the two candidates Heller and Solvino have been pumping scandalous amounts of money into the campaigns to become the next mayor of New York. Angela tells Spike she thinks Monty feels guilty making money, which must be why he gets so upset and does these things like campaigning to become mayor. Reporters ask Monty on his political positions, but he just replies he thinks no one should vote for him, nor Heller or Solvino, that people should vote for no one above. People start finding Monty very interesting, with his special stance that no one should vote for any of the campaigners. And Granville and Baxter remark he's on prime time on every station, running TV ads in all 52 states in case any New Yorkers are on vacation. A couple days later, Heller and Solvino meet in secrecy, saying they gotta do something about Monty who is calling them all sorts of bad things, remarking they should sue him for every penny he got. Next, Monty tells reporters he had to pay $4 million to them for the emotional damage he did to his slimy opponents. Next day, Monty is making a pep talk to his team, saying they're gonna crush the Yankees. Before the game starts, which is broadcast nationwide, a train comes through the outfield with Monty's campaign advertisement on it. The game starts, and Monty pitches. One in Monty's team manages to catch the first ball, and take out the first Yankee. Somewhere else, in a furniture store, Warren arrives to request a $20,000 refund for the furniture that he returned, and they hand it back to him. Suddenly, a Yankee manages to make a Grand Slam home run, and Monty disappointed has to leave the field. In the changing room, Ed appears, telling Monty that that was a valiant effort and that his uncle would have been proud of him. He then says he came to warn him that if he wins the election, which it looks like he's gonna do, he'd receive $170,000 a year in salary, which would be considered an asset and he'd lose his inheritance. As the game is over, Monty walks out to give a speech, saying he'd like to take his hat off to the Yankees. Monty says anyone can inherit millions of dollars and buy himself an election, 
but that it takes a real athlete to become professionals like the Yankees. He then tells people the election was supposed to be a joke, that he never wanted to win, and people get surprised. Monty then tells the audience he got $105,000 left and is gonna throw a party tonight, and that they're all invited. That night, Monty talks with Angela, who tells Monty she's sorry his inheritance is gone, and that she'd probably go because there's no work left for her. Monty asks if he can escort her to the party, but then she gets upset, saying she can't believe he's celebrating becoming broke, and then gets angry that he squandered $100 million for nothing. Monty says tomorrow everything's gonna be different, but she ignores him. At the party later, Monty's friends and employees come up to him, saying they gathered some money for him since he's all broke. Monty thanks them, but says he'll less spend it, saying they better keep it. Spike starts talking to him, and Monty almost reveals the deal he has with his uncle, but manages to stop himself. Spike says he can't understand why he's doing all this, but then asks if he really spent that $100 million. Monty replies yes and they laugh. He then remarks he's sick of spending, and goes up to his room to sleep. The next day, in the afternoon, Monty wakes up in his bed, and the hotel owner appears, saying he gotta leave now. Monty thanks him, after which people tell him he gotta give the clothes he's wearing back. Monty puts on his old clothes, and goes to his office. As he gets there, Marilyn appears, asking Monty if he likes it. Monty sincerely tells her this is a room he could die in. She gets happy, and then tells people they can remove everything, to return it to the companies they've rented it from. As he leaves the hotel, he speaks with the doorman, who tells him he'll never guess who he voted for, none of the above. A reporter remarks that no one seemed to know where the broke Monty is right now, but that he hopefully puts on the TV to hear the fine news, that neither Heller nor Solvino has won the election. Monty arrives at the Granville and Baxter Law Office, when Warren suddenly appears, saying there's good news, that he got $20,000 money over from a refund. Monty screams in desperation, that he's tired of this. In the office, Granville and Baxter give him a pen to sign over the inheritance to the law firm. Outside, Angela appears, having worked late, asking Warren what he's doing there. Ed tells Monty there's still two minutes left, but Monty asks what he should do in two minutes. Warren remarks he guess he can let her in on it now, explaining Monty's uncle forced him spend $100 million to receive his real inheritance of $1 billion, but that it has been a secret and that Monty couldn't tell anyone about it. Angela asks how he then came to know the secret, and Warren says that that is a secret too. But then Angela remarks Monty made it since she herself confirmed he spent the full $100 million. Warren then reveals he got a refund of $20,000 for renting a furniture that he just gave back to Monty, which will make Monty lose. Angela storms into the room, stopping Monty, and explains how Warren purposefully withheld $20,000 so Monty was tricked into believing he spent it. Monty gets angry at Warren, calling him a scumbag. Warren happily remarks he's lost, and Monty hits him in the face. He exclaims he's glad Monty hit him, because he'll now sue him for hitting him, calling him a loser as the clock starts making ding-dong sounds, counting down to 12. Monty then gets an idea, saying he's gonna need an attorney, asking Angela if she'd accept $20,000 in advance to become his attorney, which she does. She hastily writes a receipt for the $20,000, and just finishes as the clock strikes 12 midnight. As the executor of his great uncle's will, Ed announces the full $1 billion is now his. Ed remarks he senses a conspiracy to defraud, and asks Monty if he consent to a full investigation into it, which Monty consents. Monty tells Ed he's a good man, and then tells the other three he'll see them in court, and leaves with Angela. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.